Yo, Elliot, I've been sitting and thinking about my daughter who happens to be one and a half years old. I can't imagine the way our world will be 20 years from now. I read a post on Instagram about a family makes a man weaker. Excuse me. So he's saying that he read a post on Instagram about how family, having a family makes men weaker. Not in a negative sense, but I can imagine someone that took a CEO, selfish, MGTOW path of completely dominating where the man is uh, only by himself. Compared to a family man who has to choose his own, who chooses time wisely, uh, work, self, devotion, and family. That being said, I can't help myself to, but to awe in front of my daughter. I really feel myself being, uh, bringing my guard down. God willing, I will perhaps have a son in the future and go on men's trips and uh, take him fishing and hunting, shooting, being a patriarch to a boy. I suppose my question is, how could I do the same but for my daughter? I wouldn't want to impose too much masculinity on her where perhaps she ends up growing up too strong and independent. What are some activities that could be done with a daughter of teaching? So this is a great question because I have three, I have three daughters, so I can give you my experience on these various things. And I will begin by saying that that post that you read with regard to family making a man weaker isn't entirely wrong, but it's not entirely true. Let me show you how, right? It's not entirely wrong because if when a man has a family, it has been observed that his hormones change. Testosterone levels will start to drop a little bit and his oxytocin, his loving connection hormones that make you go awe, rise a little bit, right? So he does become a bit softer when a man has a child. And many men will tell you this, man, it wasn't until I had my child all of a sudden, you know, they start getting soft. And that's normal. That's natural. You might be concerned, right? Because you don't want to be a weak man, right? I had four daughters, I had three daughters, and I built my business and I was competing in straw man, right? I was throwing around 400 pound stones and, and building my gym and online business. And I had three daughters. Trust me, I was ooing and aahing and loving my daughters all over the place, right? I was joking the other day, you know, here I am, I sit here talking about being a manly man. But I used to let my daughters put a tiara on my head, right? Daddy, put, and they would have like fake jewelry, right? Daddy, put this on, put on the tiara. Like it's my three-year-old daughter. Of course, I'll play dress up with her, right? Like I told my wife, don't take any pictures. I said, oh, I'm taking pictures. <laughs> well, I was doing those things, right? Because I was softening up. I softened up to my daughters, right? But at the same time, my man, on the flip side, I was stronger than ever. Why? Because I had a reason to get up every day, to bust my face and to prove myself and to get it done and to grind and get it and go. If I didn't have children, if I didn't have my wife, I couldn't, I don't know what my life would be, but I could safely say that I probably wouldn't have been nearly as ambitious as I was in my early 20s. I know this because I was the one of all my friends that went and got married and had children early. You know what a lot of my other friends were doing? Goofing off, wasting their time, just partying and playing video games, drinking it up, but not all of them, right? I had one friend I'm thinking in particular, Rich, he's rich now. <laughs> Richie, my boy, old boy, Richie Rich, but I do remember he did, actually, he had the child the same year I had a child. He and I had children at the same time. And again, with him, he went and built up all kinds of businesses. He was the one that taught me about the internet because this was like back in like, you know, 1998, right? And the internet just came out. He was like, yo, bro, check this out. I'm making money on the internet here. I was like, internet, what is this? I didn't even have an email address. Well, he was a hustler. And I remember he's, he had his child before me. It was a baby out of wedlock. And he and the wife, they're long gone. They're not together any longer. But I remember seeing him hustle too, right? So he and I both, he and I are both probably, you know, I don't want to say we're the most successful of all of our friends. There are a lot of guys that are doing real well, but both of us had children very early and that put a fire under both of our asses. And I, you know, became Yo Elliot. And he owns like nightclubs in New York City now. He's a gangster. He's, you sending me pictures of him in 50 Cent the other day. <laughs> it's crazy. But anyway, come back to your story. The having a family will change a man, 
Will it make you weaker? Yes. Will it make you stronger? Yes. Both. Your sense of responsibility goes up. When your sense of responsibility goes up, your sense of authority and your sense of uh, duty increases as well. You got to work now. You got to do it now. You have, you have mouths to feed. That makes a man stronger. I'm watching my business partner, Chris, the same thing. He just, he just had his first child a year ago, and he's working harder than I've ever seen him work. He was always a hard worker. But he started getting more serious about his work the minute his wife got pregnant. Right? He's stronger now. He's fatter. <laughs> Chris, I'm not knocking Chris. I'm not knocking anybody because this is the way it is. It's both. You get a little bit softer, but you get a little bit harder too. Right? So don't let anybody, you know, all these MGTOW guys telling you on the internet, don't have children because it's turned you into a, into a sissy or a fag or something. That's not true. It will make you soft for your children, which is good. More oxytocin is a good thing. It's a nice thing. It helps you bond with your children and with your wife. But at the same time, if you're a real man, you will take that and have now a sense of, I got to protect this, right? I love this so much. I'm so soft for this child that I got to, I would tear anything that comes near it, right? I'll do anything to protect it. And I got to provide for it, right? So it's a double-edged sword, but it will change you. Now he says, um, that being said, I can't help myself but to awe in front of my daughter. There's nothing wrong with that. Now, awing in front of your one and a half year old daughter is okay. Awing for your teenage daughter will get you walked on, stepped on, because don't forget, don't forget, she's still a woman. That little girl, your little cookie, right? Your little sweetie pie who you're awing over, pinching her cheeks and, and playing with her, right? She's a woman. She still has a woman's nature. And I'm not saying that in a negative way. I'm saying that in a be, be a be precautious way, be cautious way, because a woman's strength is in her is, is covert. A woman's strength is not like a man's strength, which is overt, which it, it, which is loud and will fight and like, you know, get things done physically. A woman and your daughter, her power is covert. What does that mean? That means if she bats her eyes and she's a sweetheart for you, that yes, it's true, she's sweet, but she's gonna use that to rot your teeth. You could fall into all kinds of snares because, oh, my daughter. I gotta warn a lot, any man, as a man with three daughters, you gotta be strong with your daughters. It doesn't mean be a tyrant and it doesn't mean ooh, don't ooh and ah over them. They're beautiful, they're great, they're your children, but, boundaries early the presence of a father in his in the home is there for a lot of different reasons one of which is to balance out the the softness of the mother but through boundaries your daughter needs to understand that yes daddy loves you daddy will put the tiara on daddy will play with you daddy, daddy's soft and nice but if daddy tells you no or if mommy tells you no and you don't listen, and then daddy has to step in, she also needs to understand that daddy is the heavy hand in the family. Daddy's the one that's gonna, gonna drop that hammer and say, no, absolutely not. You can't do that. You can't have that, right? So you gotta be strong in that way. You gotta be strong in that way that you protect, right? Like a, 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 a wall protects, but what makes a wall so value in its protection is that it's impenetrable, it's hard, right? But the value of the wall is found in what it's protecting. So a wall is hard, it's impenetrable, but why? Because there's something soft and there's something beautiful on the inside. This is why the term walled garden shows up. A walled garden shows up in a lot of mythology. Walled gardens, why are gardens walled? Because gardens are precious. Gardens can be, you know, can be taken advantage of, right? People, the animals could come and eat the fruit or insects could come or people could just come and, and trample it. A garden is beautiful and you need a tender hand, a green thumb. You need care and love to build a garden, but that garden will not thrive unless there's a boom, there's a big strong wall around it. You got to build a wall. So he says, I, I really feel like I'm bringing my guard down. It's okay to bring, let me, let me put it this way. It's not about be, bringing your guard down. It's about relishing in what's inside the wall. You're not bringing your wall down 
by stepping down off the wall and enjoying the garden for a little while. You're bringing your guard down if you leave the gate wide open. You're bringing your guard down if there's no wall there at all. I've never created any boundaries or discipline or ever told my children, no, well, then you have no wall. And so guess what? Your children are going to get trampled on and they're going to trample on you. You're not really taking care of this. There's no love where there's no boundaries. There is no love where there's no boundaries. You know how people always say, oh, you have to remove the walls so that you can be vulnerable to love. That's partly true, but it's partly a lie because no love flourishes without a wall. Marriage is fortified by a wall, right? For love to flourish in a marriage, there needs to be a covenant. There needs to be a, a, a contract, which is a wall, which says, okay, we don't move out. We don't go outside of this wall to get somebody else's fruit, right? But of course, feminists have been convinced that that's somehow tyrannical, right? And that's why divorce was allowed. And that's why 70, 80% of divorces are initiated by women because the walls have been softened. There's no walls and men don't know how to, men can't even establish those boundaries anymore because the government took over, right? Just another rant on the diabolical dis disoriented age that we live in. So you feel like you're bringing your guard down. That's the wrong way to look at it. You're not bringing your guard down. You're coming down off the wall. You know, you're standing on the wall most of the time and you got your, you got your, uh, your gun. Every once in a while, you got to get down off that wall. You got to enjoy the garden. Enjoy the garden a little bit. Now he says, God willing, I'll have a son in the future. We'll do trip, fishing trips, hunting trips, shooting trips. Cross that bridge when you get to it, my man. First of all, you don't know if you're going to have another child. You don't know if you're going to have a son and you don't know what your son's going to be like. So I'm just going to warn you against that one, right? Enjoy your daughter, enjoy your wife, enjoy your life as it is. Stay where you are. Don't get carried away in the clouds thinking about, oh, when I have a son, don't go there. Don't go there. Because you're just going to set yourself up for disappointment. You don't know what's going to happen, right? Be with your daughter, be where you are, be satisfied, be present, and be strong. He says, I suppose my question is, how could I do the same but for my daughter? You don't do the same that you do for a boy that you do for a girl. They're different, they're different. But that has, that, those lines have all been blurred. And one of the reasons being that they started integrating boys and girls in school, which I tend to think is a bad idea, right? That's a part of how, and you know, that's a new invention also too, because prior to the world wars, boys and girls were separate. You go to boys school and you go to girls school, right? But in order to blur the lines between boy and girl, right? Which today it's, that's why we have transgenderism and all this, all the weird stuff. To blur the, start blurring the line between boys and girls and thinking that they're the same, they start bringing them to schools together. This is why boys are failing in school because it's a freaking girl's school, right? Boy, think about like this boy, like a boy. Right? He's it's the weirdest thing. Like like a six foot three teenage boy going to class with you know a, a five foot one little frail skinny fat girl with big boobs, and it, and it, and the teacher and the administrators tell him you got to respect her and that you guys are equal. We're not. We're not equal. In fact, she should respect me because if I go like this on her head, she would collapse and die. But the world, they, they've skewed this all up. They've skewed this all up. Women are supposed to respect men. Men love women, right? Because they're smaller, they're weaker, right? You love that which you protect, right? You protect, right? The big six foot three, kid should be taught be kind and love her but she should be taught respect that guy don't go talking shit or thinking that you're in, in, in more important than him um which you know they're taught that too it's not even equality anymore it's oh girl you ought to know that you're better than him and by virtue of you having a vagina he's going to do whatever you want anyway right that's how promiscuity destroys us as well sexual revolution bringing boys together in school and girls together Anyway, that's a little bit of a rant. That's an aside. He says, my question is, how do I do the same for my daughter? You don't. They're different. I wouldn't want to impose too much masculinity on her where perhaps she ends up growing up being too strong and independent. Oh, you do daughter things with your daughter and you do son things with your son. Now, it doesn't mean that, that they, can't, they can't cross, right? One of my daughters is an athlete and she likes to go shooting with me. She likes training in the gym. She does a lot of the things I do, right? 
she's we're gonna go she's gonna do firearms training with me and, and my wife and my wife even goes firearms training uh she likes to fish we'll go fishing everyone's well these these are things that girls can do too but she has no confusion about what she is and we talk to our daughters about what they are you're a woman to be a good woman to have integrity for your gender, you do the best that you can as a woman. And what that means is the best place, the, the highest, most ideal expression of a woman is found in the Virgin Mary. Two things about Mary, they sound contradictory, but that's how God operates. I use Mary as the perfect example for my daughters. Virgin Mother. That's a virtuous woman, right? You teach your daughters that, right? You teach your sons to be chaste also. But my whole point is that you have a different, you have a different, we need to, we need to have a different vision for our daughters. What has happened is we have a vision for our daughters that are fit for men. And we have for our men, for our boys. And we have visions for our boys that are fit for girls. It's topsy-turvy. It's topsy, it's backwards. My daughter, and whether they, you know, I don't know if they're going to do, I say all this stuff and I give my opinion and I do my best to raise my kids right. I don't know what's going to happen. I have no idea. I have no idea. I can't, I, there's only so much control that I have. God's in control here. And the world, Satan has his grip everywhere. Everywhere I turn, I'm having to like, ah, wait, stop. Oh, well, I let my daughters know that me and their mother are of the conviction, rightly so, that the best thing for them is to find good husbands, strong alpha male, loyal, chaste men, and become a mother, make children. So I'll, I'm, I'm getting blurry here. That's why I'm moving. I know this is not going to be the best video. There it goes. The best thing that you can do, the best example you can set for your daughter is through your wife. Even if my children don't listen to me, and sometimes they don't. They turn off their ears. My daughters, I start saying something and it goes against some feminist propaganda that they saw on TikTok. They're like, oh, dad, you're wrong. All I have, I sit back and I'm easy. You know why? I point to their mother. I'm like, well, check out your mom. Check out her life. Check out the way she operates. Check out the things she has. And if that's not good enough, because sometimes it's not, right? Because children don't want, they, they don't want to be like their parents because the world... I have another reason why on that too. I'm not gonna go too far down those rabbit holes. I say, look at your grandmother because my mom is a, is a great woman. Look at your grandmother, look at your mother. If even if you don't listen to what I have to say, you have been given ample examples of what a good woman is and how to have a good life as a result. So I would say, and I know this is not a matter of pawning your daughter, the responsibility of your daughter off to your wife. I'm not saying that at all. You gotta play your role as a father. But the way your wife is, is more important. And the way you are with your wife and the way your wife is with you is more important. That's the stuff that if, if you want your daughters to be righteous and right beyond getting right yourself and setting the right boundaries and explaining to them what is right and what is wrong because the world will steer them wrong the example of their mother and the example of your relationship with their mother. That's paramount, bro. So I hope that helps, dude. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students, where among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you want to join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word King, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting. Done.